Okay, let's go over uh, some of the key features of the uh, Fuji X-T2. You have here an autofocus, manual focus uh, in your uh, AF, MF settings menu, which is right underneath IQ. We have interlock, spot, AE, and focus area. Right now, turning that to on is a really good idea. What this means, if I can go into single mode here, which I am, that means that wherever I set my focus point, that will interlock the spot area um, metering for that particular zone of focus. Very, very handy. If you're going to do a, uh, a focus and recompose, make sure you have the appropriate depth of field and distance, of course. But what it'll let you do is interlock each um, the focus point that you have set for the actual metering of the subject. Okay, here we go, and let's go back into menu. Autofocus and manual focus, what this does, let me turn it on. This is my second Fuji X-T2, I would have had it on, which I do on my other Fuji X-T2. Yes, I've got a couple of them. Um, this lets you do um, manual focus override when you're in autofocus mode and single. Once you actually press down and lock autofocus, you're actually able to take a hold of the front of your lens and say, yeah, that's what the camera has chosen, but I'm going to override that. And what will happen once you do that with the shutter pressed halfway down, you can actually adjust the lens and focus peaking will come up and let you choose the exact spot of focus. And what is this useful for? Like low contrast, poor lighting situations. By locking on autofocus with the camera, what that will do in uh, bad situations, which really is not an issue anymore with the X-T2, but it's still handy, is that the autofocus will lock basically 95, preferably of course, usually 100% of the way of where it is that you want if you have autofocus set correctly. But if it's really bad situations, once you have your uh, autofocus, uh, excuse me, your shutter release button pressed halfway, you can override that autofocus acquisition by your camera by manually focusing and engaging focus peaking. Um, another important thing, and Right now it is off. That's because I don't have a lens. I have the 27mm pancake on, which does not have image stabilization. The image stabilization default mode is set to 1. If you have a lens on the front of your camera that does have uh, optical image stabilization, um, OIS mode 1 is the default factory setting, and I suggest you actually always leave it there. It does draw more power from there. What it's doing in mode 1 is it's always stabilizing the image, even when you're looking through the viewfinder, even before you press the shutter. Mode 2 only engages once you fully depress the shutter release. The problem with that is, even at decent speeds of 1, 2, and I've done a lot of testing on this, at speeds of uh, 1, 200, 1, 250th of a second, uh, this can actually induce blur because what that means is you uh, continue to press the shutter release the rest of the way and the image stabilization the lens actually goes into effect. What it does is it jumps and it can actually induce a bit of shake. That is why I actually always, even though it uses more power, leave my IS mode set to 1. Right now it's not selectable because I don't have an optical uh, image stabilization lens on this camera so it cannot display it, but normally it would like if I had an 18 to 55 on here, some other lens with OIS. Okay, another important thing is a lot of people think uh, that uh, boost mode um, simply uh, changes uh, the rate at which uh, you uh, actually uh, um, are able to fire off the shots, and that's not correct. Let me go into drive mode, drive settings. Like, if I have a vertical grip on this, of course I can change from 11 frames a second to 14. I can do 14 frames per second electronic shutter in boost mode with a vertical grip and 11 frames with mechanical shutter. Boost mode not only uh, decreases the uh, flicker rate um, from uh, 65 frames per second to a 100, as far as blackout in your viewfinder, what it does 
also is it additionally gives you 8% faster autofocus tracking because when there's less blackout there's a higher strike rate on the Fuji X-T2 meaning that it's spending less time of blacking out and writing an image and more time striking out to hit the autofocus on your moving subject so boost mode people incorrectly understand only half of it really is that boost mode is not merely for faster frames per second and for doing 30 minutes of video as opposed to 10 minutes of video but it also lets the camera see more of your subject that is moving and reach out and strike the subject at 8% 8% uh, faster rate which will give you a better keeper rate so it's actually going out there and hitting your subject for autofocus at an 8% higher rate and that is actually one of the really key important features of, uh, of boost mode on the Fuji X-T2 um, that people really don't mention. They say, well, in boost mode I can shoot 30 minutes. It's like, well, that's true. Well, in boost mode I can shoot, you know, I can just sit there and uh, rip them off. Bram! And like, well, that's true. Uh, that's also true. But really the important thing is that you have a higher keeper rate because the camera is focusing more on hitting the subject with its autofocus instead of being blacked out. Okay? Thank you for watching this. I got another tutorial video after this. And, uh, Thanks for watching, okay? Bye.